good news, but I have been asked, I don't like to talk about myself really, but I have been asked to explain who I am, what I've been doing, and um, why I'm here today. Uh, so I live in France, and my wife and I have come all the way just for the pleasure of being here today. We realised that our own home in the Languedoc was at risk of fracking. So I quickly had to. Ah, is that better? Yeah. So I had to quickly gen up about this new process of fracking. And I'm a geophysicist, I've got 45 years uh, postgraduate experience in geophysics, and I have. Uh, consulted occasionally for oil companies in the past, I have to say. Um, but the problem went away in France because the government in 2011 listened to the farmers, to the wine growers, to the general public, and not least to the scientists, and just decided to cancel all the fracking licenses. So this is a civilised country and that we have no problem anymore in France. But unfortunately, you guys here in the UK still do have a problem. So I've carried on working full-time, studying fracking from the technical angle. Um, I looked at my PC the other day, and it has 33,000 separate items in my fracking folder to do with fracking. So I have studied it worldwide, but I concentrate particularly on the US and the UK. Now I have written for about seven of you uh, environmental groups objecting to fracking at local areas. I have written you detailed technical reports which I hope are of assistance. Um, How has that been met by the industry and by the ghastly pro-fracking academics in the British universities? Well they, they can't take issue with me on the technical detail because they, I think they know I'm right on practically all the details. So instead they've resorted to smear and innuendo and in two cases to outright defamation of my character. So this is the only way they can try and fight against uh, technical experts like myself. So back in January I decided to write up my work and I published a technical academic paper in a respectable European geophysical journal about fracking in the UK. And three days later, my rights of access to the academic database via Glasgow University were cut off without explanation, uh, which is a, a disgusting action by an ancient and famous university. I'm fighting this legally, and many of you here, I'm very thankful to say, have supported my crowdfunding uh, appeal to raise money to fight the case against Glasgow University. And I raised the target of £10,000 in only two and a half days. Which shows how much the is and it currently sits at 14000 the latest news is that um, unless the university backs down, and they had till last night to do so, unless they back down, then we go to court, and I have the advice of a senior Scottish QC that my case is very strong. And if we have to go to court, we shall win. Because this goes, this goes beyond just a question of tracking, it is about the deep and insidious corporate influence which is now controlling the British universities. And I'm ashamed to say that I'm a graduate twice over of Glasgow University and I used to work for them. Anyway, on to the good news. It comes out of the US and no, Donald Trump has not committed suicide. Um, it's to do with the economics of fracking. We now realise, I'm surprised that this is not better known, that fracking in the US is now shown to be a gigantic scam, a Ponzi scheme, which has never made any money for the frackers. And let me give you three 
simple figures from independent sources to illustrate this point. The cost of fracking in the US to date, since it started, is 500 billion US dollars. That's an enormous sum. You can work it out yourself if you think of 7 million for each frack well, and there are 70,000 frack wells in the US since 2004. That adds up to 490 billion dollars, or let's say 500 billion. Now the income from these wells, and this is from a US government source, and all I did was add up the details on the spreadsheet, the income comes to 260 billion US from the sales of the oil or gas. In other words, just over half the cost of fracking. Now the rest of the money that the fracking companies got uh, is as reported in the Wall Street Journal last January, not exactly averse to industry and big business, the Wall Street Journal. They said that the US fracking industry is running a debt of over $200 billion. So you see how these three figures are adding up. Now, the, if I may say so, the shit has now hit the fan. The fracking companies are going bust by the dozen. 80 or 90 of them have now filed for bankruptcy. The investors who were stupid enough to buy the junk bonds in fracking have now all lost their shirts. The lesson for the UK, and it's amazing that you know how ignorant of uh, economics people like George Osborne and so on. <laughs> Unbelievable. Isn't it? The lesson for the UK, where even the industry admits that the costs of fracking will be two to three times greater than in the US, the lesson for the UK is clearly that fracking is uneconomic. So my advice to you, my advice to you if I they are offered is let us keep up the pressure by all legal means, obstruction, challenge, argumentation at the local level, trying to delay the progress of this ghastly industry run by a crowd of essentially cowboy companies like Quadrilla and I guess. Keep up the pressure because I think within a year the investors who have already invested in iGas and Quadrilla and Third Energy and Ineos will pull the plug. And furthermore, furthermore, no new investors will come forward to what is clearly, just in financial terms, is a complete disaster. So that's my message to you. It's a hopeful message. We just have to hang in there. One more piece of good news, which is on the side uh, for you to enjoy yourselves. Um, a lot of you may have heard about the fantastic uh, black comedy, which went on in Chichester Festival Theatre last July. It was sold out months in advance. It was called Fracked, or Don't Mention the F Word. And I do have to declare an interest here. It was written by my old friend Alistair Beaton, who is Britain's leading satirical playwright. Um, it was an enormous success. The two stars who appeared in it, Anne Reid and James Bollum, need no introduction, they were fantastic in the role. And Alistair has allowed me to say, to announce today, that this production of the play is now doing a national tour all over England, followed by three months in the West End, with Anne Reid and James Bollum. So please enjoy yourselves, go and see this play which is enormously funny and of course also makes a point about fracking. Uh, and I should add, uh, as an afterword, all the technical stuff in the play is completely accurate uh, and this is completely unconnected with the fact that I was the technical advisor for this play. So thank you very much.